There has been a shift in supercomputing superpowers for Tech Republic and ZDNet. I'm Dan Patterson, and a latest survey from Top 500 ranked China's new supercomputers at the top of the list. The U.S. is not far behind, however. With us to discuss the rise in China's computing power is Tech Republic's Connor Forrest. Connor, what does this mean for China's ability to process uh, relative to the rest of the world? Well, Dan, it's really interesting because this list, uh, as you mentioned, from Top 500, which ranks the top uh, performing supercomputers in the world, uh, China, for the first time, has uh, put out, I believe, 202 machines that have made that list. That puts China at the number one spot uh, in terms of the sheer number of systems that are on the list. Now, as you mentioned, the U.S. is not far behind with 143, 144 uh, machines, somewhere in that range. Um, but it's really interesting for the first time that, the U that China, however, has taken such a dramatic lead. Uh, just a mere six months ago, the U.S. was leading with about 169, 170 systems. So in just that short amount of time, uh, China has really kind of brought the heat with the supercomputing systems that they're putting on the list. And what competitive advantages does this give China? Well, you know, on, on top of just having the number of machines, uh, China also has the kind of largest share of uh, computing power, the, the aggregate flops that are represented as well. So, you know, what these supercomputers are typically used for is in a lot of research context, context. So in the U.S., um, our ranking system, Titan, which is number five on the list, is at um, ORNL, which is a national research laboratory. And those are used to kind of do kind of quantum computing situations to do the kind of uh, processing that's needed to really push forward scientific advancements. So by having such a large number of machines, uh, it's really going to put uh, research and development uh, in the tech sphere, but also in a lot of other industries, really uh, push them further ahead in China. And what does this mean for United States or Western companies? Well, as you mentioned, you know, the U.S. is not far behind, and the U.S. was a leader. Uh, the really interesting thing about these statistics on the top 500 list is that uh, even though kind of China and the U.S. are battling back and forth, uh, really the next ranked down country only has about 35 machines on the list. So China and the U.S. are really dominating the sphere. But what it means for Western com countries and for the U.S. in particular um, is that, you know, the, the, uh, the gauntlet has been thrown down and that if the U.S., which has lost a few machines off the list, if it really wants to maintain that that top spot, it wants to jump back to number one in the top 500 list. It's going to have to really uh, invest more in the development of these machines and really start uh, providing a use case showing how the power can be used to really, once again, push forward technological and scientific advancement and innovation. All right, you can read Connor Forrest's entire story about China's use of supercomputing by visiting Tech Republic and learn more about supercomputing by subscribing to the Tech Republic Next Big Thing newsletter for Tech Republic and ZDNet in New York. I'm Dan Patterson.